Hi everybody, welcome to a very special live colour advice session. We are here this evening streaming live from the Taubman's Colorsmith Studio here at Clifton Hill in Victoria. I am super excited to be here tonight with Charlotte who is our resident interior designer who works and owns this space. So tonight we've got a fun field um, evening for you. We're going to show you how you can create some beautiful flat lays working within this space. We do encourage you to upload any questions into our feed. Um, if you do have any images of areas that you'd like some assistance um, with colour, um, if you're embarking on a project or you'd like to know something about our wonderful portfolio of products that we have designed to protect and beautify your space, pop it into the feed. The images hold off until we finish streaming, then send them through because as we are live and while we're streaming, we're unable to receive images. So we're gonna start. I am super, super excited. I know I've said that, but I am. I've spent the last two days here I'm at the Colorsmith Studio working alongside Charlotte, who is just amazing. And so we are here this evening. Please, Charlotte, tell us all about the studio. Sure. So first off, welcome everyone to the Colorsmith Studio yeah. in Fee. So we're located at 384 Queen's Parade, Clifton Hill, Victoria. And so what the Colorsmith Studio is about, it's a full service colour design studio. So it's a hands-on environment and it's also one of a kind studio. And the whole concept behind the Colorsmith Studio is to provide personalised design consultations tailored to your needs. So what you can come in here and do and explore a range of colours and create your own colours and all while are following along with an industry expert which you can ask questions and be involved in your own design process. That is fantastic. Yeah, and what is unique about the space is that we have a range of materials and samples so we can create flat lays to visualise your environment and we also have a colour sample pot machine where you can create your own sample pots and brush outs to take home. And then at the end of your consultation, we'll provide you with a brief with all your specifications, product recommendations to make your whole experience that bit easier and exciting the way colour should be really. Oh my goodness. So you're really not going to be able to get that anywhere else. I think yeah. we are certainly at the right space tonight to experience this. It is fantastic. The range of samples, um, beautiful design elements that you have in store here to work from is just mind blowing. And I love the fact that we have a Colorsmith sample pop machine here where we can scan and create these elements and create your beautiful bespoke colors. So I think what we should do is let's get into it. What we're going to do, actually, no, before we begin, I really want to ask you a question. So as you know, I'm based in Queensland, very coastal. So mm -hmm. it's all about whites, white on white on white on white. Yeah. You know, 50 shades of white. But there are two um, colours and design things that really come into play. And so one of the most frequently asked questions around colour is the need for a sage style green. And then we talk about a creating a beautiful Hamptons aesthetic. And we talk about the beautiful blues and greys that sit within that realm of that design. Um, I mean, that's Queensland. I'm so interested to hear about what's happening within your space. And what are you finding um, sort of trending within Victoria? Yeah, well, it's funny you say that, Fee, because sage green, definitely something I see a lot. Nice, really nice, soft, muted, almost grey sages, beautiful. as well as like po popping in a uh, colour with more deeper sages yeah. and even though we have very different styles of architecture and buildings here such as a lot of Victorian homes around this area people still love the, those different greys and deeper blue greys which is really great they want to put that Hampton style with a twist yeah fantastic so you know because we're going to create and get our hands dirty so to speak and create a beautiful flat lay I'm going to say I have to admit we have Spent, as I said earlier, we have spent a little bit of time together already and we have already created some colours um, with some of the beautiful elements we have here which we'll take you through because of time restraints and obviously because of the setup it's not that easy to sort of manoeuvre and go over there and create. Yep. But don't let that deter you, we still have the most beautiful colours. I'm super excited to share. So am I. So let's do it, let's get in, let's create that beautiful aesthetic that's going to work extremely well with a sage green. So beautiful. Let's begin. Let's what go. are we going to work with? We've got so many things yeah. here. Yeah. I'm thinking, and you can say no. Yep. I think we should start here. Yes. We've got some yep. fantastic samples that you could use um, of joinery within a kitchen space. A nice monocratic green yeah, palette there. I have to ask you, 
What do you think about fluted timber? Love it. Love I think it. it adds just like so much dimension to a space, lots of texture and like the curves as well, the shadows. I think it fits really nicely. Okay, so do you think we should add some fluted timber? Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, let's do that. What else do you think that we should bring to light? There are so many. I think layering upon layering yeah. of green is something that works really, really well. Yep. So let's bring. Yes, I love life. the like textures it. having like a shiny surface and a matte surface as well. We can even bring in some carpet as well. Okay, you happy with that? Yeah. Okay. I think that's nice because like it's that? like, you know, it's a soft it. muted with this sage. Okay. Um, what about for a bench top? I mean, there's a few selections here. What are you thinking? Yeah, for bench top, I think, yeah, the marble. Yeah. Okay. Do you think we should do that as well? Like yeah, I think of... a nice bit of white in there. Okay, let's pop that there. Beautiful. Let's pop that there. Timber. Yep. Oh. I think, you know what? I think should you we, can get, use? yeah, should I think like, well? I think okay. a nice like soft timber as well works. Okay. And I also oh. actually don't mind the look of like a deeper. I love a deeper that. timber in there. I love that. I think that's beautiful. Also, what do you think? Yeah. Oh, I love this. I love that matte black. Yep, really so popular. Let's pop that. How can we continue this? Oh, fabric? Yep. Oh, beautiful, love. nice shimmer, yeah. sheen. Oh my goodness, I want to live here. Yeah. I think that you know what, with the black, you yeah. could actually <coughs> pop in something Ooh. like this. Repetition. Yeah, a bit of repetition. It's got the black from yeah. the handle and also injecting another source of colour, which could be Do a rust. Do you think that the principles of design are really important when you're creating a space and to have that cohesion and having, as you said, the repetition, like especially with colour? What's your thoughts on that? For sure, yeah. You definitely need to take the design principles into consideration when designing. Yeah. So your whole space flows and it's like a harmonious experience. I love that. I'm going to have to say... What do you think about that? Yep. Should we do it? I think so. Yep. And okay. it's even got Look at bits of green through it. Look at that with that. Okay, so we're kind of creating, there's almost two zones that could happen from this. Should we? Yeah, yes. we're about yep. to go to this game. <laughs> Should we inject something yes, like that? I mean, that I would be that. the most beautiful to have like a tan leather lounge. Yep. What about that? Yep, I love that deeper oh. shade of green. There are so many greens that we could create from that. Do you think that we should continue on and create our exterior and then start to work out what we want to bring to life in the way of colour. Yep. I okay, so it. we've got this. Now, I have to ask, I'm all about, like when I design a space and when I colour up a space, so to speak, I really like cohesion and I love the fact that, you know, you can walk from the interior to the exterior and the zones work together. I think it's really nice to have connection. So how can we do that? Like we've got all of this happening, we've got this. Yep. If we're going to create a Hamptons, I'm thinking, could we bring to life one of these colours to work with that? What do you think? Like, yeah. Let's have a look. What do you think? I mean, yeah, immediately, got... do you reckon we could use that? Yeah, I think we could okay. definitely bring the rust in. I love, like, like you that. said, bringing an exterior through to an interior. It just yep. creates your whole colour story, doesn't it? Okay, do you think we could, let's give them yeah. options. Let's pop all the bricks. I think that we could do something with that quite well. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, I think it's really important as well when you are creating or designing an exterior colour scheme that you've really got to look to and take into consideration the colour of your windows, your roof, your garage door. It's certainly a way of, um, I like to use a garage door. So having the same colour for the roof, windows, garage door, I think yep. it creates that one and it gives you that one neutral and then allows you to build and play with other colours. So do I. Okay, so do you think, oh my goodness. Yeah, I love the fabrics love too. Should we have, which one or should we just? Yeah, I think we should pop them all down. Okay. Yeah. Any particular order or are we just going to yeah. pop it down? Oh my goodness. Oh, they're so nice. And look how well they, they tie do. in with it the all works. And the textured material and the fabric. That connects oh, that. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's so exciting. I'm loving this blue. Yeah. Beautiful. And then I'm thinking, you know, for a, um, a Hampton style, obviously weatherboards and yep. things like that come into play. So we could inject some weatherboards into yes. our design. And we could also, let's just pretend that we're going to use this and, and have a front door colour yeah. as well. Yep. So maybe I'll pop yeah, that I there. Yeah, I love that. All right, so we've got this. Now let's talk about colour. How do we bring all this together? Because colour is going to be the key. So I'm thinking that if we create a beautiful sage. Yep which we've already sure. done earlier. And then 
I'm thinking on along here, what if we brought to life that beautiful blue? Yes, I love that, for sure. And the connection, the cohesion. Are we going to extract a colour out of here? Yeah, I think that would be a great idea. Okay, Pull let's it do through. it. That'll work with both. Okay, so the easiest way when you are creating a, fat, a flat lay, when you come to the studio, you're going to experience this. It's the creation of beautiful bespoke colours. And we do that by using um, Colorsmith and really leveraging the Colorsmith reader. The reader itself is a little device that connects to the Colorsmith app um, via Bluetooth technology. So you can download the Colorsmith app by Torbmans yep. from either Google Play or the App Store, depending on your device. And the way this works is you double tap yep. to wake the reader up. So it's going to flash blue. You open up the app, you select Create from Match, tap on the Colorsmith icon, and then you're going to go through the prompts. It's very easy. It guides you how to it connect. Is so easy to set up. It certainly is. Having said that, let's hope it works. We are live. Yeah, are you connected? Well, yes, I've connected. I'll see what Fantastic. I get from this blue match. Fantastic. So you're going to, oh. Beautiful, I think. Oh, I'll start the match. Okay, and I'm still waiting. That's what happens when you lie. Yeah. So we'll just, we'll go out of the app and we'll go back in. Yes, all right. I think I'm getting created a beautiful colour. Yeah, I think. Okay. Maybe we'll use yours tonight. I think my internet oh, no. is having trouble here. Yeah, okay. So okay, I've got, fantastic. I've got... Yeah, that's beautiful. That's a gorgeous colour. So once you've created your colour, you can save your colour. And the beauty of it is that you can name it. I'm really thinking you can, it's up to you, but something like a Victorian blue or something. Yeah, like would be I very love that. Appropriate considering where we are. Sure. It populates a QR code, that QR code we then scan when we're in store, and then we create the colour. So let's go to something that we prepared earlier. Yes. So we scanned earlier on oh a my beautiful. Gosh, beautiful. Oh. Beautiful green. And then we scanned a beautiful green. You've scanned the fabric and created a beautiful blue. Now I think let's just, I'm thinking, you can, you can correct me and say no, but you talked about fluted timber and you yep. talked about it being a fantastic element um, in a kitchen and a wrap around your island bench. What yep. do you think? Let's yeah, that's for sure where I'd put it, I think. Okay. And because sage is our statement, I think it looks so nice to okay, be fantastic. in the kitchen. So I'm just going to give it just a whoosh of colour. Wow. Oh my goodness. That blue that is, blue. you know, that blue there would look magnificent on weatherboards and then um, to accentuate the colour and the tone of the colour using a beautiful white on the window yeah, frames. That would really pull the whole look yes, together, wouldn't it? It would. So we've talked about sage, we've talked about, about blue, we've shown you how we can create a colour, but we're now going to show you something that we prepared earlier. Yeah. Because as we know, we're live. And we did not have the ability to create um, all of our colours, because there's too many moving parts tonight. Yeah. But so this is what through. the Colorsmith device has allowed us to create. Oh wow, and I'll talk you through where we have um, taken our inspiration. Oh, look at this. These colours are so... They are beautiful. Pretty. How are you going there? <laughs> Okay, so, as we said, uh, because we're live and I'll say it again, <laughs> we did a little bit of uh, preparation earlier on and we've created some beautiful colours. Now, I'm going to step you through where we created the colour from. We've created the green from the fabric. We've also created the lighter tone by scanning the green in the fabric here. Yep. And we've created this beautiful green by scanning the joinery sample. And Love again, that. this beautiful, rich, um, terracotta from scanning the moving parts in that yep. piece of stone. 
And as for your beautiful blues, we've scanned the fabric there. We've also scanned um, the piece of colour bond and the beauty of colour smith like to create, I think um, it's really important when you're creating an aesthetic and you're looking at colour that you have your colours to be tonally correct. Yep. And by using the colour smith um, device and then using the app, you've got the ability to heighten the intensity or lessen the intensity, creating that beautiful monochromatic colour scheme. And so that, what, that is exactly what we did. We created a match and then we lessened the intensity to create that beautiful blue. It's I mean, so when amazing. you look at that, beautiful injection of colour from different elements here, which has created a fantastic palette. So we do have something else we prepared earlier. Yes. <laughs> we are so organised. Beautiful. An entire Gosh, I just love how we've been able to connect oh, two schemes. Me too. And tie that, them in. That's sensational. That looks beautiful. Stunning. That is something I would love to have in my oh, own stunning. home. Very easy to live with, very much on trend, yet with timeless appeal, I think. Oh, yes. So, I mean, that's what you can expect when you come to the Colorsmith Studio, to be given a wonderful service like this, experience design, experience the creation of beautiful bespoke colours with our lovely Charlotte here. Mm -hmm. um, so if I wanted to make a booking with you, how do I do that Charlotte? Yeah, for sure. So you just go to our Colorsmith website mm -hmm. and there'll be a form. You can just pop your details in and we'll get back to you to get you in here as soon as you can for a consultation. So at the end of this, we'll pop a link into the feed so that everybody yep. can connect with you. I'm super excited to see the colour creations and I can't wait for you to share some of the wonderful work that's going to start to evolve. Um, now let's just talk a little bit of technical. So if I were coming to you and I'm making a booking and I'm wanting to, um, you know, I might be embarking on a renovation or a new yep. build and we're looking at an interior, what sort of things do I need to bring and how long does the um, consultation go for? Yeah, for sure. So generally for a consultation, depending on how many colours you have in mind or what your requirements are, we would say allow for an hour and a half. Okay. And in terms of bringing in things, definitely take note of um, your lighting inside, whether you know, whether that be a lot of natural lighting, a lot of artificial lighting. Also, we do have, as you can see, quite a range of materials, we but do. also if you have anything at home, definitely bring it in, bring in tiles or flooring, or even if you have um, a couch or a cushion or something you love the color in, bring that in and we can actually tailor your whole color design around your favorite oh item. Gosh, yeah. That is amazing. I don't think there's anywhere else that offers this level of service. And I've seen <laughs> reviews, you do an amazing and remarkable job, Charlotte. Um, let's quickly talk about exterior. So if I'm coming to you and I've booked an exterior consultation, what sort of things do I need to be aware of or what sort of advice would you give me before I come here? What do I need to do? Yeah, for sure. So definitely a big thing is what, where, how your house is situated, what the lighting is. Also taking into consideration gu your garden. You might have a lot of yeah. trees and things. It might be your darker patches around certain sides. So you're definitely taking note of your surroundings. And another thing I would suggest would be do a bit of research what you like. So drive around, take photos of things you see you like. And yeah, or even a good place to start is looking at roof colours, oh. whether you want to go light or dark. Fantastic. Girl after my own heart. That's exactly <laughs> what I say to my clients as well. That is fantastic. Um, I guess, you know, that, that kind of, we've talked about flat lays, we've talked about how you can connect. I guess that I should have a look and see whether we have any questions. We've got one question, so just bear with me and we'll have a look and we'll see how we can Yeah, assist. we can even um, finish off. The, oh, let's put the finish, finish that off very I, quickly. I can see some stuff there that will we work We forgot nicely. about that. Yeah. Okay, so you're right. Let's just pop on. A little bit of greenery. Beautiful. And how are we going to inject a little bit of Melbourne? Yep. Well, we have some autumn leaves with that beautiful rust. Oh, how fantastic. nice is that? It's you could frame this. Yeah. I think it is just stunning. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, let me have a look here and see what we have. Beautiful. Um, I love that we've got like a nice soft sage green and we've moved all the way through to a Hamptons with like a warm touch, like a warm oh, twist. It's beautiful. Yeah. And that's the whole thing about design. It can be interpreted. I mean, the bones are there, but I really do believe that colour is so personal and your journey with colour is yours. Yep. And I, that's what I love about Colour Smith, the fact that you, colour can evoke an emotion and colour 
you have the ability with Colorsmith to bring that emotion to life and you can really connect with your consumer by naming it after something that means something to them. Yeah. So, you know, we've got our Victorian Melbourne yeah. Hamptons happening yeah. here. The bones are there, the colour palette's there. We've just injected a little bit of Melbourne, as you can see with the rust. Yeah. But we do have a question. So thank you, Jenna, for joining us tonight. When you say fabric, what are you referring to, please? So I guess we've talked about fabric tonight in our flat lays. We've talked about using different fabrics to build upon. So your fabric may be a doona cover. It may be your window furnishings. It may be the cushions that you're going to throw on your lounge. Yep. That's sort of how we're talking about fabric. Then for outside, we're talking about fabric. It might be you've got an undercover area. You've got exterior um, furniture and exterior couch. It might be the colour of that couch. It might be um, the cushions that you throw on that couch. Yeah. So that's, that's where we're referring. Um, if there are any other questions, please yeah. come back. We'll answer some more. And I suppose as well, just showing that this device can pick up colours from materials and fabrics, which is really great. Okay, hi Peter, thank you very much for joining us. Your question or your saying, it's hard to find the Colorsmith link to meet up with you. We will pop a link into the feed as soon as we finish streaming, which will direct you to the Colorsmith studio and allow you to make that booking so that you can meet our lovely Charlotte and be wowed by what can happen here in the studio. So exciting. Okay, we can't go without having a question about white. Yep. We are constantly, <laughs> um, asked about white and we do have one here so a fameless sorry a favorite timeless exterior white from Therese hi Therese thank you for joining us now when we talk about whites whites are very very complex as you know we know we yep. talked about <laughs> it in the last couple of days and I think there's a lot that comes into play and we've talked about if you're talking about an exterior it depends on the level of natural sunlight that the exterior is going for to sure. receive um, depending on where your house is situated. So I'll give you an idea. So in Queensland, where every second, actually every house is white. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. There's so many varying shades of white, but what I do recommend, and I think it's really important when you're going on a white journey, it's to understand how white will play out in an exterior environment. And the best thing that I can let you know is to look at what's called the LRV of a light, which, yep. of a color, sorry, which is the light reflectance value. So all colours have that. And when we start talking about whites, I like to work, so you've got from zero to 100. And the best thing that, I don't know whether, can you get your colour smith up? Yeah. Let's just tap on a colour. So here where it says colour value. So anybody watching at home, and if you've downloaded the colour smith app, this is where you can learn a little bit more about it. So if you've created a colour, you tap on colour values, there's a little question mark, and I'm gonna read what it says here. LRV or light reflectance value refers to how light or dark a paint colour will look on a scale of zero being black to 100 white. The lighter the LRV number is, the lighter the colour is. Now when we talk about exteriors, and I like to use the terminology of a colour bleaching out. So if you've got yep. direct sunlight on a white, um, the level of tint comes into play here and like uh, using something like our Brilliant White, Mm -hmm. which I believe has an LRV of around about 95. It's a fantastic white for trims. And it's as great. we talked with this beautiful blue that we created, a brilliant white set against that would look stunning for trims only. Mm. For broad wall, it's too light. It would have too much glare. You'd be having sitting out there first thing in the morning with your sunglasses <laughs> on. It's just yeah. not. So for me, when I talk about whites, referencing that LRV, I look at around about 65, to 75, pushing to 80, if you're gonna do all your broad wall exterior, knowing that there's enough substance in the white for it to play out really well exteriorly. What I do recommend is that, and I say this every week, so my favorite white, there's no secret here, I'm gonna say it's Surf Mist. It's one of our top whites used for exterior. When you look at it against, if you get yourself a brilliant white color chip in the hardware store, like hop down to Bunnings yep. or come in here, yeah. grab a white chip, <laughs> and then you put your Surf Mist colour chip in front of that, you'll see the level of colour and people go, oh, it's too dark. Yeah. But when you put it out into full sun, it looks so white it and does. so bright, but it has enough complexity in that tint to stop that glare. So the best trial or the best thing that I can recommend is to get yourself a large piece of cardboard. I talk about a metre by a metre square, mm -hmm. brush out three coats, so get yourself a sample pot and you can organise that here. Yep. <laughs> brush out three coats of the colour onto the large piece of cardboard and then move it around the exterior of the dwelling. You'll be able to see how well it performs in full sun. 
mm -hmm. in areas that lack light, but also to the other colours that are surrounding you, be able to see how they start to play, you know, so with important. that colour. Yeah, it yeah, is really yeah. important, isn't it? And the same for interior, like yep. how many questions, how often do we talk about whites for interiors? Oh, it's one of the biggest questions, I think, in and colour. <laughs> and, you know, What's the perfect white? But it, it all comes down to your own environment, doesn't it? It certainly does, and we've talked about that a lot over the last couple of days. And one of the big things when you're shopping for a white is understanding that things like lighting, Yep. Um, other elements that feature in the design in the space. And also two things like your flooring. If you've got, you know, beautiful warm coloured floorboards, all of a sudden that white can sort of be, you know, warmed yep. up a lot more. And I use this analogy a lot as well. If you've got a red leather lounge, all of a sudden areas of your walls are going to start to look a little bit pink. So again, it's trialling that sample pot. Yep. And then, but where I would recommend is up near the ceiling. So where you've got your wall meeting the ceiling there, you're going to place your paint it out swatch once it's dry and you'll be able to see how it's going to play within the environment and again here's your floor here's your wall you're going to put your sample down there and you're going to see how your flooring etc is going yep. to influence that color so important isn't before it? we go and i think we might have a couple more what's your favorite white and why i've got to put you on the spot i would say crisp white why because it's just it's so versatile it's just it's got you know enough enough depth and it's yep. really you know it's really workable you know it's still warm and it can go with so many different colors it can and it is it's mine yep. as well i've got it oh. down my whole house <laughs> i love crisp white and you know what it's our number one white so if you're looking for, for somewhere <laughs> it is and if you're looking for a white and you're not sure where to begin start with that because it works with everything you know depending on whether you've got a lot of natural light yeah you know sun drenched rooms rooms that lack light it's going to work extremely well. Let's touch on greys. We do have a couple more minutes. Yep. I want to ask you because, you know, apart from being asked about whites, yep. we do get asked quite a lot about greys. And as we've yep. talked tonight, you know, greys are very much on trend, mm -hmm. especially with Hampton still being that, you know, colour sort of theme of choice, if you like, design theme of choice. Um, for me, I yep. differentiate greys being, and I'm interested to see whether, you know, you think the same and say no, I'm happy yep. to be, you know, like, interject, please. So for greys, yep. categorising greys, okay, how would you categorise them? I go for a green-based bay, green-based grey being neutral. Yep. Blue-based grey. Yep. Okay, good, we're on the yep. mark. We're on the mark. Um, what about a grey? Yes. yes. <laughs> yep, which is a brown-based grey. Yep. And what about purple or red-based grey? For yep. sure, yeah. Okay. So for you, if you're helping um, a client and they're not sure where to begin with greys, which way would you send them and why? So with a grey, I would definitely say a good starting point would be a neutral grey with a green undertone because it can go either way. You can warm it up, you can cool it down and you can really work from there and see yep. how that grey plays uh, out. Again, a girl after my own heart. <laughs> Singing from the same hymn book. I love it. Okay, so we do have, oh, we've got a couple more questions. We can probably get to those and then I think we'll probably need to conclude. Okay, so. Okay, is crisp white better internal or external? I'm going to say. I'm feeling we're going to say the same thing. Internal? <laughs> yep. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> ah, look, fantastic. If you're doing trims for external, I think it would look, you know, with some of the colours that we've created this evening, those beautiful greys and that blue. I really think crisp framed. white, because crisp white contains, it has just one tint, so it has a brilliant white base. It's a beautiful white that contains a high amount of titanium dioxide to give you that really solid white. And then it contains raw umber, yep. which is kind of a murky sort of brownie colour. But what it does is it creates the most beautiful softness to the white. So it's not going to throw blue undertones as we talked about before. So crisp white for internal, use it for external just for trims. That's yeah, my opinion. I think so too. You, on the external really frame your colour, yep. like your pop of colour. We've got one more question here. So hi Suzanne, thank you very much for joining us this evening and your question is, can you please recommend a shade of light grey wall contra contrast with white architraves and surf mist windows? Okay, so are we talking exterior or are we talking interior? If you can come back to us, we would be very happy to help you with um, some beautiful greys for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think that concludes all of our questions. You know what, it's bang on 8.30. I'm going to say 
Thank you so much, Charlotte, for having us and for letting me be a special guest in your studio. It's a pleasure. It has been amazing working with you over the past couple of days. Your knowledge, your colour expertise, I love it. I would love to spend a lot more time working with you and I hope that we do <laughs> yeah. in the future. And I'd also like to say to all of our viewers out there, you know, do reach out, do book yourself a um, colour consultation in the studio with Charlotte. You're not going to be disappointed. This is just a, one example of what can be achieved within this space. The fact that you can create beautiful bespoke colours. You're going to have it designed and created by... This lady has a double degree, interior design and marketing. You just can't go wrong. Look, I've loved being here. I've loved being able to work with you. I've loved being able to see your insight to how you work with colour, um, how you put all those design elements into creating these. It's been an absolute pleasure. So I want to say thank you so much, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll let everybody know that we're going to be in the background for the next half an hour or so to answer any further questions. And if you do have any images that you'd like to um, have us look at and help you with colour, please, once we stop streaming, use that as an opportunity. So again, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for joining Charlotte and I this evening. And, um, have a fantastic week and as we always say, happy painting. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye.